Hi, you're watching West Bloomfield 911. I'm your host, Tim Shepard, and on behalf of Chief Michael Patton and Deputy Chief Kurt Lawson and my brothers and sisters in blue, I'd like to welcome you all to the show. Joining me today is Mary Ramaya. Mary is here today represent, representing the Chaldean Cultural Center of West Bloomfield. Mary, welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to come and uh, speak with me about the Chaldean Cultural Center and the uh, Chaldean people in general. So I want to start with saying this. Um, in West Bloomfield and in Oakland County, I know we have a pretty diverse community. Right. And one of the cultures in this community, um, which is well represented, is the uh, Chaldeans. Can you tell me a little bit about, first of all, yourself and uh, the Chaldean culture in general? Thank you. Uh, the, well, as for myself, I am a second generation Chaldean. Both of my parents are immigrants from Iraq. The Chaldeans come from the Nineveh plain of Iraq, which is ancient Mesopotamia. I was born and raised in Detroit, uh, was educated primarily through the Catholic schools in Detroit, went to Jesu, went to Immaculata High School, and then the University of Detroit, got a degree in history, and then worked for Warren Woods Public Schools as a teacher, a student advocate, and eventually a counselor. And so um, I, I grew up in Northwest Detroit, worked in a suburban school district, retired from the schools in January of 2011, at which point I became the director of the Chaldean Cultural Center. Nice. Now the Chaldean Cultural Center um, originally, uh, there's one in West Bloomfield. The one Correct. That, uh, you became director of one in Detroit or where was your, where were you the director of? No, the, the only Chaldean Cultural Center is in West Bloomfield. Okay. And okay. the only Chaldean Museum anywhere in the world is here in West no Bloomfield. Kidding. That's amazing. Okay. And so we're very proud of it. Absolutely. And, and um, <clears throat> I had been on the board of directors for the Cultural Center. And then when I retired from Warren Woods Public Schools, I then became the director of the Cultural Center and did that until my, I retired effective January 1st of this year. I, so now I'm an unpaid consultant to the Cultural Center and um, do a lot of tours. I am a docent for the Cultural Center. Nice, and well, congratulations on the retirement. Thank you. Hopefully you're enjoying that. I'm um, trying very hard. Good. <laughs> I know it's a change, to, a change from working to retirement, right. um, but I know that you're still very involved with the Cultural right. Center. Um, you know, we had spoke earlier, and I had told you a little bit about my background. Um, you know, growing up, I was not aware of um, Chaldeans. I d mm -hmm. had no clue what, I never even heard the term before. So can you tell our viewers um, some specifics about Chaldeans, sure. Chaldean culture? I know we, we spoke very vague in, in a, a few seconds ago about um, where they came from. Can you be a little more specific? Sure. Okay. The Chaldeans date back to ancient civilizations. Um, we are part of the amalgam of people that lived in ancient Mesopotamia. They were the Sumerians, the Babylonians, the Assyrians, and then the Neo-Babylonian Empire. And the Neo-Babylonian Empire is the Chaldean Empire. And its most famous ru ruler was Nebuchadnezzar, okay. who built the processional way in the Ishtar Gate. The, the empires were rising, you know, they were, one empire would conquer another. So the Chaldeans are a mixture of those people. Eventually, through populations moving as different rulers came um, to power, the Chaldeans eventually settled in northern Iraq, near the city, current day city of Mosul, the okay. second largest city in Iraq. And so we come from villages in the Nineveh Plain. What makes the Chaldeans distinctive, especially today, is that we are Christians. We are specifically Catholic. We belong to the Chaldean Rite of the Catholic Church. So we are a minority religion in a predominantly Islamic country. And so the Chaldean, uh, Chaldeans were actually converted to Christianity during the very first century of Christianity. We were converted by St. Thomas the Apostle, Apostle. So shortly after the, the death and resurrection of Christ, uh, the Apostles went out and um, 
spread the gospel, and so the Chaldeans are amongst the earliest converts of Christianity. And over the centuries, without um, getting too bogged down in, in our religious history, um, we belong to the Church of the East. There was only Christianity. Over time, um, we left the Catholic Church because of a Nestorian teaching. But in the 16th century, under Pope Julius III, which was during the time of the Italian Renaissance okay. and um, Elizabeth, Elizabethan England. Sure. You have to excuse me, I was a history teacher. No, that's great. <laughs> I love to hear it. <laughs> um, we rejoined the Catholic Church. So we are fully in full union with the Catholic Church. Okay. Uh, we are, we were farmers, we were an agrarian society in, in the villages in northern Iraq. My own parents came from a villi village called Tilkirpa or Tilkirf in Arabic. Okay. Chaldeans speak Aramaic, which was the language that Christ spoke. So one of our claims, well, based on fact is that we speak the same language as Christ did. Oh, that's interesting. So when we say the Our Father in Aramaic, oh, we are speaking it as Christ would have spoken it. Oh. There is a classical Aramaic which our priests use in the liturgy. We speak a vernacular dialect surah, but it's the language of ancient times. Okay. And in the villages in northern Iraq, the uh, they were farmers, but unlike American, American farms, you had a farm farmhouse and maybe hundreds of miles away would be another farmhouse. Okay. So the farmland was adjacent to the home. In, with the Chaldeans in the villages, they lived together in a village and then the farmland was on the outskirts of the village. So the villagers would walk or take pack animals to the farmland, farm it, and then come back to the homes. So the villages provided security and compan you know, companionship and, and communal living. Well, that's the one thing, um, again, from my uh, history, I, I wasn't familiar with the uh, Chaldean culture. And I, I have noticed uh, in West Bloomfield, it's a very tight-knit community, and that possibly could be part of the reason is, is the, the beginnings were um, more uh, together and working together and then I just kept that culture. Um, let me ask you this, um, in terms of coming to the United States, why did the Chaldeans come to the United States? Right. Um, just going back for a second, Chaldeans lived in self-sufficient villages. They traded with each other because we were um, minority religion, they wanted to marry within the religion, okay. um, although surrounded by the, the Islamic culture, and so they tended to be sort of closed in. Okay. I mean, um, t married other Chaldeans sure. because of keeping the faith. Okay. They started to come, the first Chaldean that we know of that came to America was in 1889. Okay. He went to Philadelphia, worked in a hotel, which I find ironic because many Chaldeans, some Chaldeans now own hotels okay. in yeah. this area. Um, but he went back to Iraq and stayed. Okay. The Chaldeans who actually came to America and stayed were in the, around 1910. By 1910, there were Chaldean men here. The first ones to come were young men probably seeking adventure, okay. economic opportunities. It wasn't religious persecution, which is what we now have. I mean, the Chaldean immigrants coming today are being persecuted. There is a genocide. Okay. But the original ones, I think, were same as other ethnic groups, uh, adventure, economic sure. opportunities. They came, landed, like my own father went through Ellis Island. And the reason that we think that there were three reasons why they came to Detroit, because they could have stayed in New York sure. or on the East Coast. But one reason was on Ellis Island, um, Ford Motor Company was advertising, if you come to Detroit, you can work in the Ford factories okay. and earn $5 a day. Okay. So they knew if they came to Detroit, they could economically survive. Okay. A second reason was that 
in the Detroit area were Lebanese and Syrians who had come before the turn of the 20th century. They weren't Iraqis, they weren't Chaldeans, but they were from the Middle East and they spoke Arabic. Okay. Chaldeans, especially those from Iraq, um, speak Chaldean or Aramaic and they also speak Arabic because okay. that's their national language. Sure. And then many are trilingual because they speak English. Okay. And so they knew that if they came to Detroit, they would meet other people from the same region of the world, from the Middle East, and they could communicate um, through the Arabic language. So there was sort of like a, a, a brotherhood, a yeah. comfort area. Yeah, right? Absolutely. And then the third reason that they came to Detroit is that by the late 1920s, by 1929, 1930, the Ambassador Bridge and the Detroit Windsor Tunnel mm -hmm. had been built. Okay. So if you go through Ellis Island, you're given a physical, and if for some reason you're detained or you maybe are not allowed into the country or your papers are not correct, you might be able to immigrate to Canada. Oh, I see. So families might be brothers, cousins might be broken up, some allowed into the U.S., others immigrating into Canada. Okay. So if they lived in Detroit, and their Canadian immigrant lived in Windsor, they could easily visit each other, okay. living in two different countries, but the proximity and the ease of traveling back and forth. So we think those are the three reasons why they settled in Detroit. Okay. And we tended, it, didn't be, it took me a while to become aware of this, but like I grew up, well, when I was first born, it was in the New Center area, not okay. far from the Fisher Building. I remember going to the Fisher Building when it was a movie theater, not okay. a, a playhouse. And then we moved to Northwest Detroit. And so I grew up in a largely Jewish neighborhood in the Seven Mile, Livernois area, okay. the Avenue of Fashion. And the Chaldeans tended to follow the Jewish geographic patterns, okay. living in Northwest Detroit, then moving to Oak Park, and then to Southfield, and then to West Bloomfield, mm -hmm. and now the Lakes area. Well, that makes sense why the uh, Cultural Center would be in this area. So we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we're going to talk more about the uh, Cultural Center that, okay. that um, you're a part of. So we're going to take a short break and return shortly with more West Bloomfield 911. You're watching West Bloomfield 911 on Civic Center TV, a service of the Greater West Bloomfield Cable Communications Commission. For more information or to watch episodes on demand, visit civiccentertv.com slash WB911. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. The West Bloomfield Police Foundation raises money to help those who protect and serve the community. Whether it's emotional or financial support, the foundation provides a helping hand to officers, their families, and those in the community. For more information on the West Bloomfield Police Foundation, contact Kurt Lawson at 248-975-8900 or visit wbpolicefoundation.org. Welcome back to West Bloomfield 911. I'm your host, Tim Shepard, and again, I'm here with Mary Ramaya of the Chaldean Cultural Center. And um, Mary and I have been talking about the uh, Chaldeans and the history of the Chaldean culture and people. And now we're gonna go ahead and focus on um, the Chaldean Cultural Center here in West Bloomfield. So Mary, can you start out with, just give me some general information about where the Chaldeans Cultural Center is, how it came here, and what your role has been. The Chaldean Cultural Center is actually located inside the Shenandoah Country Club, which is located here on Walnut Lake Road in West Bloomfield. And the reason it was chosen is that the Shenandoah Country Club was sold, was sold to a Chaldean organization called the Chaldean Iraqi American Association of Michigan. So Shenandoah is actually owned by a Chaldean organization. But we never changed the name of Shenandoah because, which I believe is a Native American name, okay. because that name was so well established 
and it's a golf course and even though it's privately owned the golf course is actually public so so you don't have to be a Chaldean to play golf sure. there it's public the restaurant in the lower part of the building is public uh, the ballrooms anyone can rent them out okay. uh, there's only a, the western end of, of the country club that's actually private so the, the Chaldean Cultural Center was initiated in 2003 when they were deciding about um, how the uh, building a new building. Okay. The Shannon, you know, it's a it's a brand new building that opened up in 2005. So we said that we would like the western, the eastern end of the building, and so in the eastern end of the Shenandoah Country Club there is a museum there's an office and we are we are more than the museum but the museum is sort of our crowning jewel okay. and it's an 1800 square foot boutique museum it covers five galleries ancient mesopotamia faith and church village life which is what i had mentioned before about the villages and sure. the nineveh plain in modern day iraq Coming to America, the journey to America, and then the last gallery is Chaldeans today. Okay. And in the, in each, uh, as you enter each gallery, there's a threshold date. There's a date on the floor that tells you what time period in history you're entering. So when you enter the ancient gallery, it's 3300 BC. Okay. And then in the Faith and Church Gallery, it's 33 AD. When you come to the Journey to America gallery, the year is 1933. Not that anything specific happened in 1933, but by 1933, the Chaldeans were well established in Detroit. They owned businesses, they had American-born children. Uh, I was born in the 40s, and, um, and they owned I mean, they were part of the economic uh, vitality of, of Detroit. Okay. And, um, mm -hmm. and in the uh, Journey to America gallery, we actually did, <coughs> excuse me, a reproduction of a Chaldean-owned Detroit grocery store. Oh, nice. So all the, everything is from the 1930s. Okay. The cash register, the adding machine, the telephone, is all from the 1930s. Okay. We even, um, uh, contacted General Foods in Minnesota and got packaging like Bisquick boxes right. and Green Giant items from the 1930s. Okay. So it's an immersive environment. Nice. And um, we tell the story of um, after the d 1967 riots in Detroit, by that time, it was almost like a perfect storm, you had the riots in Detroit, and a lot of the chain stores left the city of Detroit and left large markets. Okay. And the Chaldeans, by this time, had been in the U.S. for 40 plus years. Sure. They knew the bus they were businessmen, they had now accumulated capital, and so they were able to buy those stores. In 1965, the quota laws in America that had limited immigration from certain countries was abolished. And now if you had somebody who would sign an affidavit and uh, sponsor you to come to America, uh, you would come. And the term that was used and is used today because of the immigration issues today was chain migration. Okay. A Chaldean would bring a brother who might then bring his wife's family okay. and um, that's how the Chaldeans primarily came to America. So now after 1965 there was an incoming labor force from Iraq who needed jobs and so the Chaldeans took over the larger grocery stores in Detroit although today they're they're diverse they own hotels they own um, there are a lot of real estate developers uh, those of us that our parents 
valued in education and so many of the American born or even those who came from Iraq in more modern times have university degrees so we have a lot of doctors a lot of engineers many lawyers many accountants so we have definitely diversified as we've gone through now five generations wow, five. plus okay. of Chaldeans in in Detroit so the the Chaldean Cultural Center is encouraging people to come and visit the museum. Okay. The museum is open to the public on Fridays from 11 to 3, and we will accommodate tour groups at any time. Okay. And if you call 248-681-5050, which is the number to the cultural center, which our office is right across the hall from okay. the museum, uh, we'll have tour groups. We've had synagogues come, church groups. We've had companies come who are doing in-service training on cultural diversity for their employees. Okay. And so one of the cultural diverse communities in Southeast Michigan are the Chaldeans. Okay. So we'll give an overview of who the Chaldeans are and then give a docent-led tour through the museum. Okay. We are writing curriculums because our museum fits into the, any, almost any social studies curriculum, world history, which is actually primarily what I taught in okay. Warren Woods, uh, American history, when you get to the Journey to America gallery and we talk about Ellis Island and the different groups that immigrated to the U.S., certainly geography because we are from the Middle East mm -hmm. coming to America, sure. and some Chaldeans ended up in Detroit but came through Canada or Mexico. Okay and current events because of what is going on in the Middle East today, because of the immigration issues that um, we are dealing with. Um, we fit into almost any social studies okay. curriculum. So we are encouraging upper elementary, fifth, sixth graders, certainly middle school, high school, and post-secondary okay. to come and take tours um, of the museum and we're providing um, learning materials. Like we even developed a, the Chaldean Cultural Center developed a, um, an activity book based on the Aramaic nice. alphabet. And so we do letters, the letters, and then have pictures with, uh, pictures of words that start with that letter. So it's to learn the alphabet and it's a coloring and activity book. Oh, that's, that's Certainly wonderful. meant for the Chaldean younger generation because okay. we want our children and grandchildren not only to know about their cultural background, but to actually embrace it. Sure. And, and also to the non-Chaldean population to know who we are right. and uh, why we ended up in a good way, yeah. why we settled in southeastern Michigan, okay. and the many um, the many ways that we contribute to the to the economic and social development of of the good life that we have here in southeastern Michigan. Well, that's wonderful, and um, I want you to, if you if you wouldn't mind, would you say the number one more time so people could hear it again? Sure. The number to the Chaldean Cultural Center is 248-681-5050. So even though we're inside the Shenandoah Country Club, we do have our own office and our own phone number. Okay, and the other is, are you on social media? Is there Facebook? We have a Facebook page. Also, if you just Google Chaldean Cultural Center, it'll take you to our website. And if you get onto the, once you're on the website, you'll see the different galleries, okay. uh, information about tours, and also in the bottom right of the home page is a three minute video um, that shows you the museum. Okay. And it's really, uh, it was professionally done by a media company out of New York. Well, that's wonderful. And I want to thank you for coming today and thank educating you. me and the viewers on the Chal uh, Chaldean culture as well as the cultural center. And I encourage all our viewers to uh, call and try to set up a time to come and uh, see the cultural center and take um, advantage of learning about a uh, very diverse culture and um, a wonderful people. So I want to thank you for joining us today for this episode of West Bloomfield 911. You can keep up with the police department by liking us on Facebook and following us on Twitter and Instagram. You can also sign up for nixle.com 
and crimemapping.com for the most up-to-date information from the police department. Thank you very much for watching. Take care.